very warm welcome to all my professors and fellow mates present here. I, Irene Mondol, am a student of journalism and mass communication, beams with pride to welcome our today's guest and best-selling author, Sri Moi Pyukundu. Let's all immerse into this literary world. Now, we request our Associate Dean Professor, Dr. Akash Sidmuni, to come on the dais and welcome our guest with Uttorio, Memento, and a bouquet. <coughs> Because I know 
and now we were having some discussion before coming here and so many things we discussed in a span of 15 minutes not in a life of you know male female but in a life of each and every human being that we face and today i am so privileged to tell you that she has chosen adams university to start her book tour and she has chosen school of media and communication as students this is our opportunity to take the privilege of asking her questions <coughs> for us as a student of journalism and specifically as a human being so with heartfelt gratitude i want to welcome shimoy shimoy welcome i'm so happy that she is here a huge round of applause again for shimoy thank you students thank you now to introduce our guest Shimon Biyogundu is an acclaimed lifestyle journalist who has worked in leading publications like Times of India, India Today, Midday, and the Asian Age, and created editorial blueprints with breakthrough publications like Metro Now. After more than a decade in print media, she migrated to PR, where she held the media strategy divisions of Genesis Hanmar Marsteller and headed the entertainment and lifestyle vertical. of hanmar msl shimoy debuted with far away music her critically lauded first novel in 2013 followed by her best seller novel best seller feminist erotica sita's curse the sweeping success of the novel also saw shimoy burst on the scene as one of the india's strongest female voices on gender and sexuality you have got the long girl the a third work of fiction a light hearted rom-com broke the new ground of indian lyric in 2017 she wrote her first non-fiction work the widely appreciated critically acclaimed status single a narrative drawing from the lives of 3000 urban sing indian single women about her daily struggle of being single in a country where the highest validation for women remains marriage and motherhood that was featured on Los Angeles Times and the Guardian London as a seminal work of female identity the audio visual rights of Sita Singhal have just been signed on by Viacom Shimoy is the founder of community Sita Singhal that aims to address 74.1 million single indian women in this country and is leading speaker on the cause of single women in india Shimoy's fifth book cut takes a look at the stifling environment of government censorship and the struggle of a theater activist to retain his artistic freedom which was performed as a play at Delhi's prestigious National School of Drama and was directed by legendary theater director Abhilash Pillai Shimoy is the recipient of the NDTV Laureate Women Award award for excellence in literature and the United Nations Women Young Achiever for Literature Today, our School of Media and Communication, Adams University, is honored to host Shimoy and her insight on her life till now. She will be in conversation with Mumita Vidasma, Assistant Professor of School of Media and Communication, Adams University, on her latest book, The Memoir Memoir: Everything Changes by Bloomsbury. Mumita Vidasma. She is the assistant professor Department of Journalism and Mass Communication School of Media and Communication Adams University Kolkata. She is presently pursuing PhD program in the Faculty of Media and Communication Symbiosis International University Pune. She is the chief editor and project supervisor of Journal Post. Recently she has published her debut Bengali fiction book Shat Ka Hon by Ukiyo-to Publishing to 2020. She is the executive member of Global Media Education Council. She was the former editorial consultant of International Justice Mission, 
Arikus University has conferred her with a Teaching Excellence Award in 2021 and the Best Teacher Award by Kolkata Heroes in 2022. She has rich experience of 16 years in both media studies and as an academician and the print media industry as a journalist in prestigious national publications as Hindustan Times, The Times of India, The Electronics Volume Group, and The Exhibit. Before we start, I will call upon our fellow mate from film and television, Ishika Day, to welcome our guest with her melodious voice. Mm -hmm. Mira kuch Thank you. 
একটা কার বলে এবং তারপরে আমি আমার ক্লাস যখন তাড়াতাড়ি শেষ হয়ে যেত আই ইউজ টু ওয়েট ফর মাই মাদার আই শুড স্পিক ইন ইংলিশ আই থিঙ্ক নট এভরিবডি ক্যান আন্ডারস্ট্যান্ড বেঙ্গলি সো আই উড ওয়েট ফর মাই মাদার ইন হার বায়োলজি ল্যাব অ্যান্ড দেন মাই মাদার উড ফিনিশ অ্যান্ড উই উড কাম ব্যাক টুগেদার বাট আই থিঙ্ক লাইফ ইজ অল অ্যাবাউট হাউ ইউ ডিল উইথ দ্য থিংস ইউ ডোন্ট গেট অ্যান্ড লাইফ ইজ অলসো অ্যাবাউট অ্যাডাপ্টেবিলিটি অ্যান্ড সার্ভাইভেল and constantly having the courage the spine and the resilience and the faith in yourself to dream new dreams because everything changes you know i think uh, we think that you know a career or a relationship or a degree brings us that constancy but the only thing constant is yourself is your belief in yourself is your faith in yourself and is your own human compass that what i am doing is right by me i i think momita i've had a very unconventional life you know now that you made a beautiful ishika sing the song i was reflecting on my life and this is a memoir which is about my life i think i've had a most unconventional life and i think most of my successes or my achievements came built on the back of broken dreams it came built on the back of uh, you know relationships which uh, i thought were a fairy tale uh, you know and they didn't have yeah, any coming to those yeah issues. i know that so uh, i think when you don't get what you want you're forced to look at life very differently and i because you know this is a room of young people right and you are all idealistic i hope you're not cynical as yet uh, still very idealistic about human values about goodness about the profession that you're going to choose but life actually is like you know uh, throwing cold water on your face when you leave the gates of adamas university and you enter into your professions you'll realize that uh, it's not what was taught in the classroom but what you make of it so ha yeah, so amar mone hoy tomar question ta khub sundor it's a lovely beginning to the adda and maybe mane amra aro eta gobhire cha aro aro gobhire chao that sriti ter arekta gaan exactly ei ei the songs that i have picked up yes. really, you know uh, from i was i was going through because i i want to show my students and my faculty members uh, this was the book sita's curse first female erotica that uh, beauty uh, and i i i actually call her beauty she has been my senior uh, during my jnu days and first time i met on campus so i know her more than 20 years yes. and so and gosh i saw you yeah <laughs> <laughs> so we are both from jnu and this was a time i think we met 2014 yeah, yeah, yeah. i was uh, with another college yes. and we had the same new batch coming and we are interacting why is it a curse why female desire especially i think it needs guts to talk about female desire because we don't talk about uh, our second question to you is uh, share uh, with our students how you started your journey i know it's a big long journey but still uh, you know we have students out here who are dreaming of becoming a uh, journalist or a uh, pr professional you have both uh, in, in both the fields you have you know rocked i would say and then now being a writer for last uh, a decade or so right uh, so how was the journey how would you like uh, within a uh, few you know sentences you would uh, you would say that what actually uh, your journey to date so i grew up <clears throat> uh, the daughter of a young widow and uh, i lost my biological father to the shadows of schizophrenia when i was 4 years old my dad took his own life and by then my mother had moved into her parental home which is quite common when uh, women in this country lose a husband or they become divorced because we don't have any social security for women in this country which is uh, you know state sponsored to begin with uh, there is hardly any support network so my mother like millions of women came back to stay with her parents she's the only daughter 
মা খুব ব্রিলিয়েন্ট মা আমি তো ফাঁকি বাজি করে ভালো করেছি কিন্তু মাই মাদার ইজ যেটা ইউ নো বাংলা হাউমেনি অফ ইউ আলা বাঙালি আমি যাই না দেয়ার ইজ আ ওয়ার্ড কল গাঁতু সো মাই মাদার লাভস পড়াশোনা শি মানে ভীষণ পড়াশোনা করে খুব মানে শি ইজ রিয়েলি অ্যান অ্যাকাডেমিশিয়ান আই থিঙ্ক সো আই ইউ নো আই সোট গ্রু আপ ইন আ ভেরি লার্জ সাউথ কলকাতা হোম উইচ বিলং টু মাই মেটার্নাল গ্র্যান্ড প্যারেন্টস ইন্টেন্সলি লোনলি চাইল্ডহুড বিকজ দেওয়ার ওয়ার নো কিডস অফ মাই এজ আমাদের যারা বাড়িতে হাউস স্টাফ ছিলেন আমার উড়িয়া ড্রাইভার কালীপদ মামা আমাদের যে ইউ নো শান্তি মাসি ওয়াজ মাই চাইল্ডহুড ন্যানি এদের সাথে মানে চাইল্ডহুড কেটেছে সো রাইটিং ইউ নো আই ইউজ টু রাইট এ লট অফ পোয়েমস আমার ভীষণ ভালো লাগতো লিখতে আই ফর আ লট অফ আর্স আই থিঙ্ক রাইটিং ইজ কথার্টিক and also a form of self expression and a escape from solitude right when you lekha shobai mone hoy you are almost writing and my first uh, i won't say literary works but my first works of writing were imaginary letters to my deceased father i didn't know that my father had passed away i was bullied a lot in school um maybe we would we should share those stories because you know these are youngsters and uh, i was bullied a lot yeah i was bullied a lot in school um i was also extremely obese body shamed growing up i received no male attention aajkal je body positivity kotha ta khub empoweringly use kora hoy i have no body positivity uh akono if i'm given a compliment she may you look beautiful i'm extremely uncomfortable Uh, and i've been told uh, by people that i'm i don't know how to accept a compliment about my physical self uh, because i'm not used to it you know i would like to you know add here yeah. same with me yeah. yeah i have been a typical bangali uh, girl yes jake bole bete kalu and these were always come from your Labels. close quarters yeah, yeah your yeah. relatives yeah. and your and you never had i mm-hmm. never had that kind of confidence or confidence mm. all that i gain eta tumi bolle and evolve as a person my work work yeah coming to the work environment then you, you come, feel you some evolve as yeah. a person yeah i do agree with that yeah, yeah. i mean i uh, i won't say that my family had any role to play in my low self confidence i think it also happened because i was i think ragging what i used to do now but i was bullied a lot in school and i was very conscious that i stuck out like a sore thumb akun single parents single mothers single fathers who common i'm sure there are many children here or young adults here should call you children young adults here who may have come from families jekhane there's only one parent right because of death or divorce or maybe uh, even the the child of a, a single mother or father but back in 1980 that was an anomaly and uh, you know the first thing that uh, in school i was very conscious of is why my father doesn't come to pick me up why he doesn't attend the ptms or concerts and even that question right which i think we should stop asking children is tumake kar moton dekhte i didn't have a reference point because i had no idea about my father my father's family completely washed their hands off us after this and one of the things that i'm hoping that we talk about uh, where this book is concerned is about survivor families and mental health and how that makes the survivors almost invisible so my school the only saving grace to me jero kon work bolcho for me was my academic career i was brilliant and i was also very popular because i think you know i used humor to deflect the criticism against my body i had buck teeth i got my periods at the age of 10 i was the youngest girl in class to have her periods and i developed a condition called pcod on it mera hi hoy to a condition but chhele ra hoy to familiar who have sisters and or girlfriends or whatever it is so it's a ovarian um, you know cyst problem ja jone <coughs> hormonally on it change hoy you put on weight and i had a mustache and people used to tease me je you know mucho erokom kore and i was very conscious i stopped participating in sporting events i was just saying this yesterday at another event because i was amader rajuni male teacher chilo mr ramnath who came from the army and he was very you know 
strict and khub baje bhabe amar sathe kotha bolten i mean he's no more now all due respect to his departed soul but i think he came from that very you know foggy you know like you have to win and you know everything is about you know tumko dubla hona hai patla hona hai and he used to tell me you know kya tum you know you run like a sack of potatoes i stopped running i've never run in my life and now when i work out uh, i'm a complete uh, workout freak i do it for my health not to look beautiful or be sculpted or whatever but i'm aiming for six packs chena kichute hi hocche na keno according to my trainer proshanjit apni bhat chhatte parchen na ota parchi na so bhuri ta is not uh, you know uh, going down as much as it should but now when i work out i think that for a person like me had i been encouraged a little more maybe i would have been a good sports woman because i like physical activity so that was my childhood um ami tar pore jadavpur university te jai i must here mention an interesting incident um and i'm sorry if i'm digressing a bit amar ma presidency college e porten my parents met in presidency college and amader family te shop by basically it a family rivaz er moton you know presidency তো আমি হিস্ট্রি স্টুডেন্ট আমি প্রেসিডেন্সি কলেজের এন্ট্রেন্স এক্সামে খুব ভালো করেছিলাম অ্যান্ড আই ওয়েন্ট টু প্রেসিডেন্সি কলেজ ইউ নো দ্য ফার্স্ট ডে যেরকম ফ্রেশার্স হয় না দ্য ওরিয়েন্টেশন প্রোগ্রাম আই ওয়াজ র্যাকড অ্যাট প্রেসিডেন্সি কলেজ অ্যান্ড দেওয়ার আর বাঞ্চ অফ সিনিয়র্স হু হ্যাড বডি শেন্ড মি তারপরে আমি মাকে বলেছিলাম যে আমি আর প্রেসিডেন্সিতে আর একদম যাব না অ্যান্ড আই ওয়েন্ট টু দ্য হেড অফ দ্য ডিপার্টমেন্টস হোম উনি জোরপুর পার্কে থাকতেন and i had lodged a formal complaint but let me tell you for teachers and uh, journalists who tell students to lodge complaints it's extremely scary because the next day you go back into that hostile environment and the people who are ganging up against you form bigger gangs and what colleges need is actually more students bodies which are standing up for the rights of students if students say that you will not do this to one of us right then things will change police politicians professors you can't change the system like that so tarpore jadavpur university result bero i stood first and amar jadavpur bishom kuri lekhe jilo you know the girls were smoking and uh, you know because i came from a nunnery loreto house was a nunnery jekhane chhele der bola hoto ugly elements so you know mr ramnath chhara amader kono chhele professor chilo na you know amader sob shomoy khub value i mean i'm grateful to be a loreto girl but it was stifling you know and that moral constant uh, veneer of morality as a as a as a young woman i think i was claustrophobic um i was jadavpur was like a khola akash it breaks my heart to think amar university to be shotti tai and amar mone hoychilo you know there are boys engineering science g couples you know hat dhore ghure beracche teen khana fest hoy sanskriti teen khana fest at a handsome may i help you lagi ekta blue shirt pore ekta handsome chhele আমার মার হাত ধরে নিয়ে যাচ্ছে হু আই ইমিডিয়েটলি হ্যাড আ ক্রাশ অন অ্যান্ড আই ওয়াজ ডেট শিওর হি উডেন্ট ড্রেস ইন প্রোকেট বিকজ দ্যাট ওয়াজ মাই ইউ নো ট্র্যাক রেকর্ড অফ কোর্স আই কুড ম্যানিফেস্ট এনিথিং বেটার বাট আই লাভ যাদবপুর অ্যান্ড আই আই স্টাডি ইন যাদবপুর ফার্স্ট ইয়ার কোনো ক্লাস করিনি আই ওয়াজ সো এক্সাইটেড দ্যাট ইট ওয়াজ ইট হ্যাড নো রুলস নো রেগুলেশনস প্রফেসরের সামনে আমি হেঁটে বেরিয়ে যাচ্ছি ক্লাস থেকে অ্যান্ড হি ওয়াজ লাইক কোথায় যাচ্ছ আমরা স্যার ফেস্ট আসছে না সো আমি ইনসিডেন্টলি ইশিকাকে আমি বলতে চাই যে ইশিকা আই অ্যাকচুয়ালি তো ওনলি থিং দ্যাট আই ওয়ান্টেড টু বি আই ডেন্ট ওয়ান্ট টু বি আ লট অফ থিংস তো ওনলি থিং আই ওয়ান্টেড টু বি ওয়াজ আ প্লে ব্যাক সিঙ্গ আই ওয়ান্টেড টু বি উইথনি হিউস্টন অ্যাকচুয়ালি বিকজ আমি ভীষণ ভালো গান গাইতাম অ্যান্ড আই ইউজ টু লার্ন সিঙ্গিং ফ্রম দ্য লেট শ্রীমতি গির্জা দেবী and the other thing was i wanted to become an archaeologist uh, because you know amar history because i'm a student of history i think history is also about storytelling and amar uh, professor amar mone ache onek din age dr chitrabrato palite sathe amar ekta flight e dekha hoychilo cp 
and uh, I told sir, sir, uh, sir, it could do kochi to me, Cambridge again, at me, I do brilliant chile to me academics, it you call lena. Tamibulam, sir, I be boiling club, up need to push you and Nabulaha, actor Jinish Kinto, we bold was you know it to be leak the word of Halavashi. To my answer paper, good lava, good in staple of the patam, and the low cash to shoot on you, take a share I could the auto. To Amitabulam, sir, brevity is not my forte. Which is why I am a novelist. I am a short story, I am a long form. So I actually uh, appeared for the Inland Scholarship uh, to go to Cambridge to study archaeology. But you know, life, uh, I think, dealt me a very harsh blow. Or maybe it was my fate. Uh, maybe it was just the way things were meant to be. I was in a very, very violent first relationship and we should talk about that. Yes, we'll come to the questions. So, Ota Kore, I was so scared that my boyfriend would kill me because he was like a stalker and a complete sociopath. I MJ Akbar, of Asian age, a presidency. I want to be a journalist. He said, if you can survive one year in a newsroom, and you don't get kicked out, or you don't have a nervous breakdown and quit, then you're a journalist. So I told my mother, I said, 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 I was very excited. Actually, I wanted to run away from this guy, but I couldn't tell my mother. And that's how I became a journalist. When I come to a lot of these uh, academic institutions, you know, there's a pang of sadness that uh, I could have been in Oxford, Cambridge, PhD, professor. Uh, now, universities reach out to me saying, why don't you do a PhD in women's studies uh, with gender because you've done so much. But you know that it's like a first love, you know, that little sadness always remains in you for a dream which uh, you ran away from. Uh, so that's how my life actually started. And because we're in a media school, that's how I became a journalist. I Kolkata to Kolkata and I went to Kolkata and I said, I you have to get master's exam. You have to get your degree, MA degree, so 10 days after I stood on stage, Jadupur University convocation, uh, you know, orange, uh, eat a pore, matha, to be to be pore, vada, and what a holo, I mean, medal pela, me, or maki dila, and the next, I think, eight days I was on a flight to Delhi, and my life changed. Journalism changed my life, Delhi changed my life. The Shimoi that you see here today is a product, I shouldn't even call myself a byproduct of journalism. So I'm so glad that, you know, because book events say I think a lot of the focus went on mental health and, uh, you know, my life and relationships and all of that. But I'm so glad that I hope today we talk about the, the journalism part of the book and the struggles of a young journalist. It's so good to see so many women in this course. You know, I was interviewed by Munidipa Banerjee uh, at uh, my launch. At my Delhi launch, I'm being uh, sort of moderated by another iconic woman journalist. And it's just lovely to be in conversation with women journalists because I uh, started my career there weren't many women. Um my media college, there was a lot of media college. There was a lot of media college. There was a lot of Asian College of Journalism. Because the male is not a male. Because journalism is a very good thing. We have been no dangerous drag, reporting is a very good thing. We have been a male no time. Journalist is a very good thing. It 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 is a very good thing. Thankfully, that prospective stage is taking a good or bad, God wish them well. But um, yeah, I remember uh, I was with Times then, Calcutta Times. <laughs> we had to do page three. <laughs> and you know, page three money, I want to show you Rafti Guru Tindi's. So I remember Rafti Tindi's show, next day my father was like, you know, uh, make a reclam. Rafti Tindi's show, my friend. Baba just packed, the, the reply was, 
uh, you must have checked which uh, which car. Exactly. It's written Times of India. Yeah. The sealed mouth sealed and, the, mouth. and the parents that I have mm -hmm. support that I have got are kono dino they have not questioned my Rafi Duto Pinti. Right. 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 And I have chosen my partner. He knew that that was my passion. But later on I shifted to academics. That was totally my decision. decision yeah. But he knew that uh, writing and this part is my passion. So right. uh, that way I will have been lucky. Lucky. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So next question, uh, what message you will give to those who are grappling with mental health issue? Like your Baba, I know that it's a very difficult phase. I, I was reading, uh, especially the first chapter. Yes. <laughs> I think we should have this entire discussion with those lights <laughs> so J light chaleyach, everybody is putting on the lights now. So but thank you that I mentioned the Atocom, but still people are listening, that's a good sign. Yes. Uh, in the that the part is that very difficult, but I was reading your first chapter on Baba. And I was immersed into the specially, you know, middle class mentality where somewhere you have written that, you know, uh, your, uh, about your grandmother that uh, the kind of uh, possessiveness they have on their children, especially male child, uh, middle class, it's a woman, you know, woman and their, their mentality, the kind of new, the chosen partner of uh, of, of the child that he she has born bear. So AJ how it was difficult and what message you want to give to people who are actually grappling with mental health issues. It's very difficult. Uh, I mean what I can focus on the China but yeah. this everything changes mm -hmm. has a very integral part of this you yeah. know message especially. And uh, on eighth we have mental uh, you know uh, this uh, wall prevention Ten. suicide yeah tenth. Uh -huh. Tenth is uh, 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 prevention, suicide prevention day. But what message do you want to give to you know, youngsters? To so that there are a couple of things. Yeah. yeah, there are a couple of things. One is, like I said, a large part of this memoir is about my acceptance of my father's death by suicide. A lot of you will get into reporting, and I just want to put this on the table that even now, uh, you know. Uh, you mentioned uh, Sushant, or recently the very famous cinematographer Nitin Desai took his own life. We still use the word committed, despite the fact that suicide has been decriminalized by the Honorable Supreme Court of the country. It's not a crime. It's a product of a cancer of the mind. It's a sickness, like my trainer's father passed away from cancer and my father passed away, I think, from a cancer of the mind. So there are two things. One is that how do we um, deepen the vocabulary of discussing mental health at home? See, when I think all of us in this room have grappled with depressive thoughts, but depression is not the same as suicide. It's two different things, right? And all of us, including me, have gone through very low patches. You know, there are people who have contemplated taking their own life or at least had the thought that I don't want to live any longer. What else is there in my life? Maybe it's a relationship. On a family, on a toxic, uh, you know, parents, on a life, financial problems face. And, you know, Love affairs, uh, betrayal, cheating, egulo hole, vata bie bhenge galo ba, you know, porashuna hai. I mean, ato academic pressure, chakri paatche na, tomar comparison ho chhe, tomar mama chhele da so well, but you are getting, you know, your father has paid 10 lakhs for your education and you are a duffer, you know, so, so many things. Why did I produce a child like you? So, I think mental health is something that most of us deal with, but we don't, we don't talk about it. And one of the things we don't talk about it is Indian families, um, I'm no big fan. I think there's a deep-seated dysfunction in Indian families. You know, even if you look at the way Indian parents are, their entire life revolving around their sons. I mean, college, I 
you know, jokhon porikha hoto, I would see grown mothers, you know, women in their late 40s, maybe mid 40s like me, they are coming, you know, South Pointed mothers, you know, they are, uh, you know, South Point mothers, yeah. I know, I can relate to Yeah, so, you know, I think she had to khawa chche chere ke, you know, first touch de hobe. I think we don't know how to deal with mental health. So, therefore, when any situation like what happened in my family happens, we don't know even how to describe that to the outside world. Today when I look at my mom, when I look at my I grandparents. Think, uh, we generally, we become very, we are afraid of being judgmental. We judgmental, we live in a very judgmental society. Loke ki bolve and loke eta ki kore, mane, how also that when you look at caregiving, right? When you care give somebody who is chronically depressed or bipolar or schizophrenic, you need an entire sea of support because J caregiving court che taro to actor trauma counseling but support system dot kar dine por din amar dadu ghumoten mati te because my father was suicidal so they were so scared right that kichu kore nebe and also you know when as a child you have lost your parent to suicide or you've lost a sibling to suicide. There's a sense of, there's so much mixed emotion. There's guilt. I lived and my loved one didn't. There's regret. And in my case, because I didn't even know my father, I didn't care give for my father or whatever, there's confusion, resentment, anger, and humiliation. For years, I mean, I knew about Baba's death when one of my uncles blurted it out to me insensitively one day before my ICAC exam that my father had taken his own life, which was not his place to do. And I bore a lot of maybe unconscious anger towards my grandparents and mother that why didn't y'all tell me? But now, through my own healing, I've realized how do you tell a child that their father has shot himself? How do you tell somebody? Because it's not normalized. We don't know. Akuno loke cancer hole bole na. They hide it. Families hide. Cancer, epilepsy, aginish kulo TB. Akuno loke luko chhe. So cancer jodi luko, tare imagine telling somebody that you know my husband has schizophrenia. And till forty, which is when I performed my father's funeral at a monastery in Kolkata. I have lied about my father's death. I have been shamed when I have told partners, they knew, they have shamed me saying that, you know, oh, you know, your, your dad, you know, did this and, you know, your family's mad and, you know, because the immediate thing is a person who dies by suicide is pagul. That's Pagol. And One word that, uh, yeah, and women. And if you see women, and I'm sure women will agree, even though they're much younger than me, you know, women get called crazy all the time. Women get called, you know, sunky, mental, all the time. Raise your voice, make a point, stand your ground, say no to bullshit, and you'll immediately be called sunky, pagal. Look at the way we use the words crazy. You know, oh, she's crazy. She's mentally, you know. We are so insensitive because we don't have gender sensitization in this country. It's not integrated into our school and college curriculums. We do not have any mental health sensitization. I am, one of the reasons I'm even going to colleges with this book is to talk to people about mental health, that it's okay not to be okay. It's okay not to be okay and it's also okay to tell somebody that I don't understand but I'm willing to learn. I don't understand what you may have gone through but I'm willing to hold space for you. And all of us are battling some demon, some sadness, some grief, some sense of frustration, some marital discord, some relationship, uh, you know, fracture, some resentment with our parents, some issue with our children. Nobody is really normal. We are all on the spectrum. And I think, you know, till the time we normalize this, till the time we mainstream mental health, till the time we make conversations about mental health as important as career counseling, 
we we will not, why do you think you know there are so many students every day you read in the papers you know students preparing for their a uh, neat exams for their you know mba their cat exams iit has the highest suicide rates can you imagine if you see the wedding market a guy who's from iit his parents will feel yaar maine to matlab shah jahan ko paida kiya hai because he's an iitian but if you see the fragile mental state of you know these students in kota etc who go for years they study is se ifs se loke bachre por bachre is se and they you know when they don't the frustration the the feeling of inadequacy so you know academics should not be about excellence you know colleges should prepare you for life that's all we can teach you that's all and make your coping mechanism strong so that you can cope with shit when it hits the ceiling like they say so i think mental health is something that you know is is a part of this book and also you know talking about mental health mainstreaming mental health 10 september is the international day for the prevention of suicide i am sort of launching the survivor program for one of the top ngos of the city jara paanch bachcho dure they have tried to start a uh, you know survivors program and none of the families come forward because there's so much of shame there's so much of guilt how do you tell like even in a classroom if you tell uh, your fellow student that i lost my father the first question is what happened to him right that's a very indian thing to ask kaise hua if you say i have a divorce acha what happened you know the the what happened is very important in india so how do you say it without being judged without and you know the last thing somebody who is going through a mental health crisis or who has uh, battled what a family like mine has battled is pity we don't want to be pitied we don't want to be told oh god it's so tragic oh no it's such a shame that this happened we don't want to do that you know i want the same respect for my father that anybody has for a deceased parent respect honor that's all wonderful is it uh now come thank you you need that yeah please big round of applause thank you come to relationships oh god yes <laughs> and i think uh, see, now answer. now they, now i can see all of them are doing this and sitting is kya hai abhi you know yeah. chai pe charcha like yes. now the charcha has started going to have a uh, pretty uh, yes, yes. this is a very interesting oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah nice so be dumped in a relationship oh yeah. nice i think uh, many of them can go to pink line yes. momita <laughs> <laughs> so my question is uh, beauty do you think uh, you need a closure to when you are dumped is it very essential that it need a closure and is it possible to have a closure every time you are in a relationship i'm not a big fan of this new age term closure closure ki hai i think uh, why, why should somebody else give you closure how can somebody else give you closure how how, how does closure happen like if the guy who dumped me took me to taj bengal and sat me over a glass of wine and a 10 course meal and said you know i am dumping you respectfully over a glass of wine and a five course meal i mean that it shows you are saying that somebody emailed her that i'm dumping so you. i wanted to actually make it a little fun so that we don't get all teary eyed and all serious how how many of you have been dumped on an email ईमेल तो आजकल अब क्यों पाठ है ई जनरेशन में क्यों हाथ उठा बेना दैट्स आवर जनरेशन स्वस्तिका सेड नो शो स्वस्तिका हां फर्स्ट थिंग वाज डंपिंग ओवर हाउ मेनी हैव बीन डंप्ड ओवर अ एसएमएस और अ वॉइस नोट दैट्स इट व्हाट्सएप ए आई शुड लीव द स्टेज आई एम नॉट द राइट स्पीकर फॉर दिस ऑडियंस आई थिंक पीपल आर यू नो नॉट बीइंग fear that being judged no you know, nobody is judging you i think you know, the head of the you know the dean is yeah. here and you know they are feeling a little conscious but he's such a you know to me in those 15 minutes he's such a lovely cool uh, professor and uh, hod uh, how many have been ghosted yes i think that is the gen z ghosted but the gen z not even 50% oh, oh. but this is a, so how many are in relationships oh we have professors shayo <laughs> 
interesting part. That's an interesting part, okay? How many have been really shy? Your hand is hollow. Can I hold it? Hollow. Can I hold it? Look, two bottles are empty. Okay. How many are single? Oh, look at that. Oh my. Take a picture of that. This is for my status single. Huh? How many are single? It will be shy. Okay. Ready to mingle. Ready to mingle. Of course, ready to mingle. Why not, boy? But you know, and how many are happily single? Yes. They are proudly single. Are you two hands up or two? Okay, okay, that's lovely. This is this is the new generation. This is the new generation, I think. So you know, closure. You you mentioned the word closure. I think um, see any ending, right? As authors, we we script the ending. But any ending, be it a life ending, be it a relationship ending, be it the ending of a you know your school, your college, uh, a job ending, coming from another city to another. Endings are always difficult. I struggle with endings. <coughs> Closure ta ami bolbo kyo dite pare na to mathe. You know, ama ke jodi aaj ke Taj Mahal le khaiyo kyo ama ke you know would have shown me the door. It would have hurt just as much. I think closure comes when you decide and you know what you deserve, and you also gradually accept that if a relationship has not been satisfying your needs, your sense of values, your um, you know your relationship structure, your expectations, then perhaps it's better that it's over. I think this, you know, very modern concept of closure, you know, that you, you know, call up the person and you get closure. Let me tell you, every time I have asked for an explanation, closure, respect, from a person who has already made up their mind that they are going to leave you, I have been humiliated even more. And they have just gone on to insult me even more and hurt me even more. मैं बोलती हूँ, don't give that power to them, no. Take back your power. Yes, a relationship is between two people. A relationship is between two souls. It's a soul contract, according to me. But if you if you are in a relationship with somebody who is ready to leave the minute something happens, if a person is not ready to choose you and fight for you, then choose yourself. Then fight for yourself. Then take up space. And one thing I'm going to tell all the women in this room, the young women. Some of you will get married. Some of you will choose to be single. You know, some of you will go through your own ups and downs in relationships. Never be afraid of taking up more space. You know, as women in this country, what we are taught is shrink, 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 shrink. It's like losing weight, you know. Become, 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 become size zero. Never become size zero in your relationships. You know, I have made that mistake because I guess I was looking for that father figure all my life. You know, somebody that you know we grew up on fairy tales, right? So Cinderella, Prince Charming, Ashwin Snow White, Prince Charming. You know, they live happily ever after, sunset. Bacha hobe, family hobe, all that is beautiful, but it's not the be-all and end-all of your identity. And never ever take up less space in a relationship. Never shrink to make somebody else comfortable because those relationships never work. Those are compromised realities. And even if you are a man, even if you are a woman, or you know whether or not you identify with any of the genders. I think we are in a world of gender non-binary, and even relationships, I think, you know, are much more fluid. People are exploring more. Even in my community, I have people, uh, women who are, you know, bisexual, uh, lesbian. Some of them were married, had children, and then when they exited those marriages, they found beautiful partnerships with the same sex. It's all good. All I'm trying to say is, no matter what your relationship, you know, dynamic is. The dynamic with yourself has to be the one which is in turbo drive. So, ami closure kuje chhi. Ami she phone kore, kide, pay pore. I've done all those filmy things. You know, I've clung on. 
That's something I'm working with my therapist. How do you let go easily? I don't. Because I pour myself into my relationships, you know. And for me, my relationships become my raison d'etre, you know. They, they become the the all and end all of my existence. What I'm learning at 45 is to tell myself, to tell the inner child, to soothe the inner child, which is in all of us, and to tell that inner child that it's all right. You don't have to be scared. Nobody's going to hurt you anymore. Your Baba loves you. You're loved. Even if somebody else doesn't love you, some other man doesn't think you're worthy, you are worthy. And I'm not going to say things like girlfriends say to the young people in this room, that if they dump you, it's their loss. You know, if somebody has left you, he is the loser. No, I, I don't think relationships. Yeah, You know, I don't think relationships are about loss and gain in any case. I think you know, relationships. Say na, what I have come to believe is we search for ourselves through relationships. Niche ke chena jaye. I have come to know myself through my broken relationships. You know that girl at 19 who was, her head was slammed into a steering wheel. That girl at 24 who had a broken engagement and who wanted to throw herself into traffic and die. She didn't know how to live. That girl, that woman at 44, I was in a relationship last year which ended very cruelly at the beginning of this year. Every time now when I look at myself through those relationships, I come closer to myself. A relationship is a mirror to knowing your own body, your own desires, your own physical, mental, emotional needs. And today when I look at all these men who've probably hurt me, abused me, you know, I was asked this by a journalist in Hindustan Times that, uh, you know, you've written about these men, so have you forgiven them? So I always tell them that, see, forgiveness, I am only one person will forgive anyone. And, you know, for me, when their head hits the pillow at night, if they can look back and they are okay with what they did to me or any other girl, then who am I to forgive them? And clearly some people are okay with hurting others, with abusing others, with dumping others, with cheating on others, because our value systems are so flaky today. So forgiveness, that, like I said, take the power back. Take it back. You don't need to be, you don't need to forgive somebody who's hurt you. You know, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not your life's goal, you know, that I have to forgive. Like, when she asked me that, I said, it's not my life goal, <clears throat> you know, to forgive the man for whom I didn't pursue my uh, doctrine. It's not my life goal. Do I hate him? No. He was a sick man. I hope he's undergone treatment. I hope he didn't get married and, you know, put his wife through what he put me. I hope he's, no, he's not, you know, a wife beater or something because that's who he was. The second guy was a spineless, uh, you know, completely a, a coward. I hope he's, he's married with children. I hope he's a better father. I hope he's giving the right values to his boys so that they don't turn out like him. The man I dated last year, I hope, <coughs> you know, he used to always say, I'm a, you know, he was a father. So, you know, I'm a better parent than a partner, which is the most idiotic thing to say. Because modern women expect you to be a good father, a good partner, a good son, a good brother. Because that's what I am. I'm a great sister, I'm a great daughter, I'm a great professional, I'm a great lover. So if I can be every woman, then you better be every man. Because otherwise you don't fit up. So I think, you know, men have to really, and I'm saying this with all due respect to some beautiful men out there, you really have to up your game. You really have to understand women. Because we are not looking now for a sperm donor or, you know, Amar Bhat Kapure Daito now. We're not. We're looking for like, Papia gave me a beautiful book, you know, Women Who Run With The Wolves. We are looking to run now. So you have to, you know, get on your sporting shoes and be prepared to run with us. Because if you see, if you see the number of hands that went up proudly single, singlehood is emerging as a life choice for people now. 
is no longer seen as a shameful, stereotypical, uh, no man loved you. Now people are, even those who are in partnerships are saying we don't want to get married. Women are looking at marriage as a patriarchal institution, which is how I look at marriage. Uh, you know, the, the, the institution, not the ideals. The ideals are beautiful, to love and hold, to honor and sickness and health, the vows, the ideals are beautiful. The implementation is horrible because it's governed by religion, family, culture, society, even politics. So I'm saying that, you know, closure, forgiveness, it's all, it's all inside. I look at myself now, Momita, and I look in, in the mirror and I tell myself that 19-year-old girl who lied in a college bathroom and told her best friend that oh, steering wheel. I look at myself and I forgive myself. I forgive, you know, now when people ask me at gender conferences or intimate partner workshops that she knew how could you take it? Why didn't you get out of it faster? I tell myself, never ask this question to anyone who has gone through any kind of abuse. Because everybody is on their own timeline. You know, timelines are not rat races. It's all right. Everybody has their own journey of coping, knowing when to leave, how much to take, and what you do with what's left. So I, I think forgiveness is an inner work. It's deep inner work. It's not so much what you do about others. It's, it's really how you deal with yourself. Because like I said, when, when you close the lights, then it's only yourself. Even if you have a lovely partner, it's you, right? Uh, lovely. <laughs> we can uh, get on and on. Tell us something about your status single community that, you know, I want to show my this is the book that uh, 2017, no, 18, 18, yeah. And I think this is a kind of book that we really need at times. Please tell us about your this community which you have. Uh, proud so of. the community actually, you know, happened very organically because this book was like a journalistic assignment. You know, I interviewed three and a half thousand urban single women from all over India, different faces of singlehood separated, divorced, widows, uh, disabled women, LGBTQI women. My friend Gauri Savant is in the book, uh, on whom the famous film Thali, uh, Sushmita, who is another iconic single woman with adopted daughters, is enacting Gauri. Uh, it had unmarried women. It had women like, uh, you know, Onindita Shorvadikari, who's had a child through uh, buying sperms and IVF, or adopted mothers. And uh, it became a collective on Facebook, actually. We are a Facebook-recognized uh, community group. And two years ago, that group transitioned into an uh, offline space. So today, we have chapters in eight Indian cities. We are a network of 6,000 women. Um, and uh, we just uh, set up chapters in America and US and uh, Canada and uh, soon starting in UK and Dubai. And uh, I think uh, Status Single changed my life because I realized what this world needs is community. A classroom is a community. A college is a community. A staff room is a community. That's what we need. We need communities. We need people to hold space with us. So that's, that's really Status Single. Um, uh, you know, we have uh, a wide membership. Uh, we also have a lot of children of single parents. Uh, October is our anniversary month. That's the time we open up our meetup to parents also. Because you know, there's a lot of uh, judgment, there's a lot of uh, ninde, there's a lot of scrutiny which happens to parents. divorce hai, ho gayi, you know. It's, it's a lot of narrow judgment and bigotry. So the more you empower parents, the more you empower, you know, you guys are empowered, your children will get more empowered and enlightened. So we've now sort of opened it up. I love, uh, you know, when the parents come. So many of the parents of single uh, women in my community are also single. They are mostly widows. 
uh, or some of them, you know, are separated. Tokon ka dinetu divorce hoto na, alada thaki. But basically, they are all widows. Uh, so many of them, Ebar, I've got requests from my chapter leads all over saying that the girls in the chapter are saying for our October meet, can we bring our dads? So many single dads, again, widowers mainly. So it's lovely. I love my community. Uh, I, I think now with Shimoi, that community founder word has got prefixed. And more than author, columnist, journalist, everything is, is community founder. I wear that badge very proudly. Yeah. So now we come to uh, this book that we have. This book. You know, everything changes. My question is how difficult it was for you to be as truthful in every aspect when you decided to write your memoir. It's very difficult when you're writing your memoir and to be truthful. How difficult it was? See, being truthful is very easy to me because that's who I am. So that I've means. always been, yeah, I've always Even been when I started reading this book, every chapter seems to be so familiar because <laughs> I've been reading you for uh, so many years. years. Yeah, decade. Yeah, decade. Every, yes. Also this book, I must say, Please clap, okay? Uh, yes. This round book, oh <laughs> this book uh, marks uh, 10 years of me being a full-time writer. Six books. Uh, seven. Six. This is seventh in the order of writing. Uh, it's sixth in the order of publication. Um, I think before I, I've spoken a lot, I want to read out from this book. And I want to read out a part which is about journalism. Uh, would that interest you or would you like a chapter on relationships. Which would you like? You can you can tell me uh, so that yeah, you, please uh, yeah please tell me which would you like? Okay, let's do hands. Relationship. Kyo hato I mean, this is the status single status quo. <laughs> I'm loving this. And what about journalism? What about yes? Okay, still very few. Hands. So basically, you all don't want me to read. The rest of them are not even raising their hands. No, no, I <laughs> want you to read. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I think I will read out uh, the part about journalism because it's it's really uh, a wonderful section. I think you will enjoy it. chapter I'm reading out from and uh, the books are available outside and I'll be absolutely honored to sign your copies. So when you read the book and please read books, I know this is an Instagrammable generation and uh, how many of you read books? Oh good, I'm an August company then. <laughs> so this is chapter 8. And uh, this chapter is called, No One Gives a Fuck. I'm sorry, sir, to use uh, expletives to your students, but that's well, the name of the chapter, right? Uh, it's about my years as a journalist. My first day at the Asian Age office, a motley three-story residential building in a lane shaded with gulmohar trees at the back of the bustling South Extension Market in New Delhi was a disappointment narrowly bordering on disastrous. I was thoroughly unprepared and felt insanely juvenile, balancing a file containing all my school and college certificates and published articles which Ma had insisted I carry, along with a water bottle and tiffin box, just in case there was no staff canteen. She was right about this, or drinking water dispenser. I kept glancing down, stuffing an unwieldy wad of Xerox copies back into my bag, sporting a simple ikkat salwar kameez that she had picked up from Fab India for me. My heart was racing. What would be expected of me here? Ma's friend had not really told me which department I had been designated to or exactly what it was that I was meant to do here. And so, I sat at the reception with a cantankerous landline for the longest time, waiting for what I presumed would be an appointment with the head of human resources, or the departmental head, or someone of similar stature. 
I tried checking out the other girls flitting in and out of the doors. Finally, a bespectacled, fair, authoritative woman who had earlier asked me some preliminary questions and taken away my joining papers sauntered out and told me, follow me inside, come to the news desk. There were two other girls who had been sitting and waiting patiently with me. We had not exchanged any pleasantries. We all rose from our seats in unison, making our way clumsily towards a spacious hall where dozens of staffers sat facing chunky laptops, uh, desktops, laptop children, sorry, clicking away furiously on their keyboards. Wads of paper lay strewn all around. Landlines rang constantly. Empty teacups were scattered on messy, overflowing desks next to cigarette cartons. Here, proof this. A grumpy young man in a khadi kurta with menacing dark rimmed eyes and a bushy moustache yelled while stuffing a printout in my hands. After, I had spent over an hour doing nothing except standing in attendance. It felt like being in a naughty corner, being punished. I had no idea. What did this word proof, proof pages, proof copy, what did that even mean? I was not even able to locate an empty seat or a spare computer to occupy. So I sat wordless and unmoving. What are you staring at? This is a newspaper office, okay? Not some college canteen. Prove the bloody page. He screamed when he marched back after some time, looking even more ferocious, strictly meaning business. Everyone else hung their heads down. I surmised he must be someone very senior. Can you tell me exactly, uh, I mean, what do you want me to do exactly? I, I can't, I managed to find my voice as the man looked gobsmacked. Clapping his hands, he turned to the others who sat working behind him with their gazes fixated onto their screens and remarked sardonically in a raised voice, slow clap guys for another fresher from another college. Who's gonna train this one now? This was belittling and I felt diminished. Some of the photocopied certificates tumbled out of my bag just then. I'm, I'm, I'm not a fresher. I'm, I, I'm a university topper. I'm a gold medalist. It's, it's just my first day here and I can learn fast. My words remained in suspended in midair. The man pointed at a corner next to an unwieldy printer making a rattling noise. Listen, get yourself a username and password. Then go to systems and figure out your login sheet. Then sit and read the page and correct any grammatical errors you can find followed by factual errors. Then, check if the headlines, blurbs, etc. make any sense. And then, start working on the page six dummy on that computer. Someone will show you how to start it. I'm assuming, at least, you see the computer, no? He barked instructions at me. I bent down, embarrassed to pick up the papers. The man had just turned to me. Excuse me, dummy. Blurb. I repeated, feeling a complete loss of words. I didn't know what systems meant either. Was it a department like this one? You don't even know what a dummy is. Where do they find such rare specimens? He sniggered, raising his thick eyebrows. Around me, despite the constant loud typing noise, I heard someone laugh out loud. Slowly, I made my way to the empty seat he had pointed towards. Would you like to see my mark sheets? I have never stood second in my life, I blurted. Perhaps wanting a more dignified start to a career I had staked almost everything for. Ma had quit her teaching job and accompanied me to Delhi, forsaking a flourishing career which had won her both adoration and admiration. We had taken up accommodation in Chittaranjan Park, a bomb ghetto, in a rented first floor flat, leaving most of our bulky belongings back home in Kolkata. We filled up 
the new space with more functional and cheaper furniture bought from Pachkuria Road. There was severe water shortage in the area and each evening a house help we had brought along from the city of my birth accompanied my mother to fill up bucket after bucket after bucket of water that lined a sunken onyx bathtub in which we never once bathed before I returned so I could freshen up. It was also the peak of Delhi summers. The impenetrable haze, suffocating heat and constant andhis, dust storms, made it difficult to breathe. At night, inevitably the lights would go out. As Ma and I sat on the balcony, watching street dogs bear their fangs at passerby or chase fleeting headlights, we spoke nostalgically of sultry summer nights when my grandfather would take me to the terrace in our ancestral home in South Kolkata and we lay lazily on our backs counting stars on a madhu, a mat. The Delhi night sky was barren in comparison. Idu was trying for a transfer or a new job in the hopes of joining us soon. Ma scored the CR Park fish markets during the day always ensuring that the meals we took in were as close to the ones back home and reminiscent of the culture we'd left behind. We also had hired a Bengali cook who was more familiar with our palate. Ma made it a point to dutifully drop me and pick me up during the initial months in a hired auto rickshaw. Her daily conversation always centering on the exorbitant price of prawn or fish or how our landlord's elder daughter's wife was being beaten up again and how she had contemplated calling the cops. By the time we made it back at the end of my first day after 9 p.m., as was going to be the trend on most days, we saw the couple my mother had described making their way towards the designated parking spot. We didn't have a car yet. Dinner ke liye ja rahe hai, Auntie G. The coy daughter-in-law, her face fully made up, and her blonde hair perfectly blow-dried, raised her hands in Ma's direction in a perfunctory namaste, acknowledging us as we paid off the rick. Our house help, who had come along with Ma to ferry me, made a dash up the stairs to unlock our main door. I kept asking Ma, why do you come to pick me up? And she kept answering me, Delhi is very unsafe. I dreaded Ma's next question even more about how my day at work was and wondered if I could even tell her that I had no clue what I was doing here or why I had landed up here. Maybe Ma also dreaded being asked the same question. Maybe she had no idea either why she had sacrificed her job and chosen to follow me to Delhi, uprooting a life that could have been so much more stable and which was already in more ways than one. She was now spending her time all by herself, not teaching, something she loved to do, rather following me back and forth to office because, quote unquote, Delhi is very unsafe. When she could have actually shared quality time with her husband, alone without me for the first time. I washed up in haste as Ma asked me, Tiffin Tahalo Chilo, how was your tiffin today? She had prepared chiled polao, a snack popular in Bengal, made using beaten rice and one that I loved. I had had to trash it on my way out. The sight of my senior, that mean man with mean eyes, flinging away my mark sheets and his harsh words replayed in my mind as I tossed my sweat-stained Fabindia kameez onto the ground. You don't know Quark Express. You can't even make a page. You don't understand proofing. You don't understand what the dummy means. He had sounded exasperated. The other two trainees were from journalism schools. They were rich, they smoked. And look, look, look. Before you start off on your spiel about your Jadavpur University, Kolkata, lineage, stupendous academic career, your mother, teacher, your outstanding history mark sheet, the gold medals and stuff, just get one thing straight. I was walking away by then, my head sanguinely bowed. I was scared to look back. Hey, no one really gives a fuck. Hello? Last minute. Are you like to read the napkin? 
my next question is, uh, what are your upcoming projects? You made me feel like an actress. That's how most actress interviews end. Well, yeah. celebrities. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, what are my upcoming projects? Uh, I think, I've, you know, I've just actually finished writing uh, an intergenerational uh, family saga called All Our Other Lies, which is set uh, in the two Banglas. It's about a family from East Bengal which uh, come to West Bengal. They make their fortunes. It's, it's also a very political book because I think against the tapestry of this fractured family is also this fractured state and the political masters it has had. And uh, the book actually ends, um, even if I were to letting it out, with a Hindu-Muslim riot uh, in Calcutta, which is reminiscent of something that happened in the 70s. Uh, my upcoming project is actually this book. <laughs> uh, you know, authors have to struggle very hard to promote their books. Uh, and I have someone from my publisher here, but uh, I think it's common news that we have to do everything on our own. Um, and um, I hope, uh, Mumita, to take this book to as many youngsters as possible. You know, my sister is 14, and for the longest time she just wouldn't read. Because she already had Netflix, she had her phone, uh, she had, you know, she was what she grew up watching Doraemon and Chin Chan and Mighty Raju and Chhota Bheem. And she was not interested in Enid Blyton. I was carrying back, uh, you know, Enid Blyton to her. And I had a friend who used to head Scholastic. So whenever I would meet him for dinner in Delhi, he would give me a bag full of books for my sister and she would not read. And it fills my heart that recently, uh, Geru has started reading a lot of books. And I think, um, you have to make reading a practice. You know, when I teach at I, media I colleges, because yeah. uh, I have a son, son fourteen yeah. year, and I made it a point when he was say eight plus yeah. to make it a habit every night before going to bed to read at yeah. least me and him. Yeah. Yeah. So that has really made him a voracious reader. Yeah. That uh, you know, this generation we hardly. That's find. very true. That's yeah. very true. So no, we, yeah. I would say, you know, it's not just good to blame this generation. You know, some, I once said this in a college, and one of the very, uh, you know, uh, cat like I, I, he's he's a dear friend now. He he's doing so well for himself. He told me, ma'am, why are you only saying we don't read, we don't read, we don't even see our parents reading. Our parents are always looking into the phone. They go to restaurants and my father is looking into his phone, my mother is looking into her phone. So why are you only blaming us for not reading? That's true. So are we reading enough? You know, we've stopped going and watching movies in theatres, unless it's a big ticket or it's an Oppenheimer. So are we Oppenheimer ticket for three weeks in 3D Max? Because it's trending, no? Even if you don't like Christopher Nolan, you don't have, you don't know anything about the World War, nothing, you know. But you have to post on Instagram and social open hammer, you know, hashtag, you know, Christopher Nolan. But at the same time, there was a beautiful Bengali film which was doing very well, you know, Ordhangi Nibole. Though I had some problems, but it was still well made. Or some independent film, you know, which is small. There are just three people sitting in the hall. Because it's not trending, right? Nobody's doing hashtag or thangini, you know, yo, koshi kamuri. Nobody's doing that. So I'm, I'm saying, you know, read books. It's not about Shimoi's books. Read as many kind of books as you can. You know, the education to the world, your window to the world. You know, I had people read Sita's curse. Men, boys read Sita's curse and say that, we understood more about a woman's body and her right to pleasure, marital rape, the things which the book talked about. And all the books are here. And I would be happy if you maybe didn't, or if you want to pick up all, that's great. But I understand books. And I've seen this, right? We would spend this more money on a coffee, on getting our eyebrows done, on a lipstick, on just fun things rather than buy a book. I don't get this. Like, I have always wanted to understand, why do we, why are we so miserly about a book? Is that because, a, you know, you can borrow books. So like, you know, 
I went uh, to this very richy rich uh, ladies uh, club. You know, everybody is super rich there. And I asked the women, how many of you are going to buy my book? Be honest. You've just come here to take photos with me or to buy the book? So most of them were honest and they said, we just came to take photos. And you know, it was a good afternoon. It will come out in the papers, whatever. And you know, three people will buy the book, we'll borrow. Why do you borrow books here? Do you borrow lipsticks? Do you borrow, uh, you know, your boyfriends? No, 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 never. But you know, the point is, stop borrowing books. Buy books. And then when you're finished with it, give it to a library. You know, give it in your college library. You know, give it to a children's library where children can read. Donate your books. That's what I do. I buy so many books that my mother is telling me you have to now build a boy body. Because, uh, you know, bookshelf torture. I donate. Even my sister's textbooks, instead of throwing them out, we are donating them. Ramkrishna Mission. Donate your books, but buy books. If you don't buy books, an industry will die. If you don't buy books, people will not have the courage to fight for stories. If you don't buy books, then we will stop coming to colleges. Because it will be a photo op. And the publisher will say that we will not, you know, cannot have chokhane, ki love three books will get sold. It's a business. It's also a business. Like you have to watch movies, not just open high mob. I mean, people, you know, sometimes I was amazed, you know, this extremely sexist movie, I'm telling you, I wrote a damaging review, Prakton, right? It was a super hit. And I was wondering, how are people saying, I mean, three bar Prakton dekla. It changed my life. Like, dude, how? How could you, when I see everything is trending, jeta trend kore, achke dako, tumi chetan twinkle khanna chudi as to shawai twinkle khanna dhuri with all due respect to actresses and people from different professions, right? But don't buy a book because it's trending. Buy a book, poro, then judge for yourself. Then judge for yourself. After review calling, you know, buy it. Don't just review a book which is, you know, trending. Can she review that on a paper and chakbe? Nare at a author and boy village. It doesn't matter. Read it. Judge a book for what it's worth. See, we are in a hyper-competitive, materialistic world. After review, after review, everything has become paid. Reviews of movies, reviews of art, reviews of cinema. Ami Goli, boss, the best thing is word of mouth. Today, when you have a holiday, you have a holiday, you have a holiday, you have a review of your review. You know, you have to study it, 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 it's nothing like it. There's nothing like it. Sita's curse, I have to remember. Sita's curse is now actually taught. It's taught in TIS, it's taught in a lot of colleges. Sita's curse and status single are being taught in a lot of colleges as part of their... It's always... Yeah, it's been taught. It's part of academic curriculum now. Everything Changes is now being... We're being invited to a lot of media colleges because there's a lot about the media in this book. Uh, it's also, you know, a lot of you will graduate into journalists. This is what you're going to face. It's not all rosy and nice and like your swish media colleges with salons and spas and, you know. It's the grind and the backbreaking uh, work and the gender politics. There's still very, very few women editors. It's all the big boys, you know, like corporate India, like it's a man's world, right? So you, you, you have to break many glass ceilings. And this book also gives an insight into the struggle of young women, you know, who are getting into this field without the famous father as a journalist. Choto shahor theke, I to media college jokon pora te jai, ami dekhi. Kato choto kato shahor theke, you know, small town India. They're so aspirational. I'm telling you, I went to Karnavati University, which is in Ahmedabad. And I had the most brilliant lecture there. And the students, you know, they have come from such small places of, you know, northern and western India. Some have come from northeast, you know. It fills my heart. But remember that you are going into a profession where today the truth is on sale. And I hope you don't swing down that road. Because that's going to be your tough fight, right? That, that's 
So when you file a story, you're going to be competing with space that has been bought. I must tell you a very, uh, because we're in a media college, so when we Times of India, Chila, media net got introduced. You all know media net, right? It's, it's the paid part of journalism. And media net got introduced and I had six of my reporters file their resignations. And I went to uh, the big bosses and I said, uh, well, I consider it a personal failure if I've not been able to retain these wonderful people because I was always known to be a very, a very powerful editor, but also somebody with whom teams were very happy, a very people's person. And I had him tell me on my face, I've never forgotten this. He says, look, Shino, your team is now there just to fill up space which that team, and that was a bigger team, is not able to sell. That is the reality of this newspaper. That is the reality of this industry. And I didn't know what he, and I had thought, I'll quit this paper and the world outside is better. And now I realize that's the world outside. In every profession you're dealing with it, even in books. You know, there are writers like us who struggle, work our butts off to write, be it a memoir, be it any book. Then we struggle, you know, like salesman, ki bhai, it had published called Chapo, Chapo. You know, we have to convince, go to Delhi, beg, you know, no, I mean, beg as in submit the manuscript to hundreds, hundreds of rejections, you know, ghosting, right? We're ghosted all the time. Finally, somebody write it. And then what are we competing with? We are competing with authors who are paying money to publishers to get their books out. We are competing with celebrities who are hiring people, uh, good writers who probably need money and ghost writing their books. And those books are selling. So publishers are telling actual writers, no, no, nobody's going to buy your book because even when you're go, going here and there, how many people are buying? But see, PC's book is selling, no? Her memoir is selling. This one, this one's, all actresses are now writing memoirs. All sports people are, memoirs are the flavor. But I am saying that to me, I read a memoir of this girl who had written a beautiful memoir on her mental health, on when she was detected as bipolar. It's a little book published by a very nondescript publisher, but what a book. I found that book in a second-hand store. You know, I love second-hand books, so I love, you know, buying old books sometimes, you know, the pages are yellow and you find a, a if you find something written, I love those, you know. Especially, sometimes, uh, just opposite to Ramkushan. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. If you see those second-hand bookstores are slowly going away. In fact, even when I go, I go to South Kolkata, 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 I go writing, support the arts, support creativity. And, you know, if it means putting out your pocket money or, you know, your money, uh, you know, do that. Discuss books. Have a, I'm sure you'll have a book club also in your, uh, you know, in your college or whatever. That's lovely. Have a lit fest in your college. Introduce your uh, young minds, not just to celebrities. That's why when people refer to me as a celebrity, I kind of, it's a bit, it, cringe word for me, you know, because call me an artist, call me a writer, call me a community founder, call me a, you know, a journalist, I'm very happy. Celebrity, no? Because the next thing is now, you know, somebody, you know, the other day said, Shiva, you're an influencer. I said, okay, you're blocked. Bye-bye. Nice knowing you. Because that to me is the death knell of my personhood, you know. So, you know, yeah, I mean, buy books and watch good movies. Uh, watch all sorts of movies, you know. Akunto, you are exposed to world cinema thanks to OTT. Dakho. Go to, you know, film festivals. Go to literature festivals. You know, don't just attend the Shorab Gamuli's session. But, you know, go. Akunto, I have a memory. I I don't go to Lit Fest unless I'm pushed by publishers. But I don't go because I find them the den of nepotism. I don't go. And most of the sponsors are Manik Chand Gutka. You know, something like that, which I, I find is deplorable, so I don't go. 
So the point is, I mean, I a memory. You know, I was going to a lit fest, and we had been sent these fancy sedans. And in front of me, a taxi stopped, stooped, with a cloth bag on her shoulder, but a straight spine, you know, as a woman. The doin of literature, Mahasheta Devi. And I just ran out of my car and I said, Pranam Kollam, and I said, you know, for me, Nahannati changed my life. So when I was asked while I was writing Sita's Curse, which book was your inspiration? Was it Anais Nain? Was it Sylvia Plath? My mom gifted me. My mom gifted me. No, I was like, no. So I said, for me, three books changed my life. One was Kamla Das's memoir. You know, a woman who was far ahead of her times in terms of her sexual explorations as well. One was Ismat Chuptai. And the other was Nahon Nate. And Nahon Nate was a story of forbidden love. Right at that point of time, a woman writing about being dumped, as you said, you know, and a woman being rejected, you know, and a woman writing about rejection. Because see, women, if you look at mythology, women rejection ki baabe hoyche, shubhra nagar naap ke tere lo, aur la ke bollo tumi stone hoye jao. So woman expressing desire means you are up for being dumped and your nose cut off, you know. So when I saw that that scene, you know, that this doin walking, nobody fussing around her, running around her, telling her, you know, no dinner, cocktail party organized for her, but a woman walking, and youngsters passing her, not even recognizing her, probably never having read her. Something in me said, I'm at the wrong place. I found it disrespectful. So, I will read in your mother tongue. Read in your mother tongue. We are blessed to be in a country where our vernacular is so strong. You know, be it Hindi, be it Urdu, be it, you know, my last book, Cut, was a book which was in three languages French, yeah, French, Marathi, and English. And thanks to Cut, I read so much of Vijay Tendulkar and, you know, I mean, amazing. You know, when I went uh, to Karnataka, I mean, I was talking to, you know, Kannada writers. So many of the Gyanpeet Award winners, the Sahitya Academy winners, thankfully they are not as, uh, you know, you know, sort of, like, I could national award, I could say I national award name, but, I mean, there are gems. Rabindranath, you know. Shamarish Mujumda, Sharad Chandra. You know, for some of you who can even read Bonkim Chandra, Kapal Kundala. If you read Kapal Kundala, I mean, it's very, very hard, Bangla, Mijani. But you know, the, the depiction of women, sexuality, power, and we are so blessed that we belong to a culture where our writers have written such strong women characters. Look at Tagore's women. Look at Sharad Chandra's women, even Munshi Premchand. You know, if you read your vernacular writers, you will realize we belong to a nation and a country where women are celebrated. And we will hang our head in shame when people say every seven seconds a woman is molested, raped. This is not the culture of this country. So only when you read, your window to the world will expand. Buy books. Go for the lit fest, not just to take photographs with celebrities, but to read, pick up translations. You know, uh, North Indian writers, South Indian writers, Marathi writers, pick up translations. French, German, Poro. The more you read, the more, the deeper you become as a person. And don't, you know, akun hoega che ki manushit me dekbe Instagram e kot di nije chobi lagi niche. But have they read those writers? No. Everybody is quoting somebody. Don't just quote. Read. Even if you don't remember the quote, it's okay. But you would, your life would have changed. Books have the power to change lives. Stories have the power to change lives. Now. Hello. Hello. Yeah. So with that note, that stories change life, everything changes. We come to this end of our program.
So just go, yeah, I'll just go ahead. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am and Shimoy ma'am. It was a very wonderful and exciting conversation. And uh, back to the students, do you have any questions for ma'am? I hope you do have some questions. I hope you're not one of those students who never ask questions. And they're dying to get out of this hall. <laughs> Most of them, I think, are in that mind space. I would love to have some questions. None? Ah, honey, good job. Actually, it's a lunch break. I know. Peta ki de shi ga chi shi Question, ma'am. Shall you put me here? Yeah. Shall you kiss our assistant professor? Yes, yes. Congratulations on uh, writing all those books. <clears throat> As I told you that I write reviews. I have started this for the last uh, six, seven months. And one of the uh, major idea whenever I am actually um, reviewing a book, that I have to reach each and every line and each and every word of that book. So I'm going to read it, obviously. But one of another aspect is that I have to criticize, I have to put up something which I feel is lacking in that book. So if I ask you, um, how would you criticize your recent book? I mean, it's, it's a kind of difficult question. No, it's not a difficult question. How would I criticize my book? Um, I think there's always hope for improvement. You know, uh, every time I read a book, I feel the ending could have been better. Um, or the beginning could have been a little different. But you know, I'll be honest, Amina, like, a lot of writers, if you do, if you go for writer workshops, they will tell you to revise drafts. You'll see a lot of writers talk about, everybody has a process, right? So a lot of writers will say that I'm gonna, we write the first draft, then we go through it, then second draft, and sometimes first draft and hundred draft gets published. I have never done that. So maybe because, uh, you know, I just feel that the first time I get out that's it. So anything you left out, you thought uh, later on when the book has been published that you should have covered that? No. It has never happened to me. I won't say that my books are perfect or, you know, they are like the, in, I'm the incarnation of Saraswati on stage or something, but I think uh, every book is an author's best test effort. That's a modern word. My sister uses that, best test. I don't think English dictionary has that word, but kids use it nowadays, best test. I think every, uh, like see a painting, it's done, it's done. A movie, it's done, it's done. You know, reviewers, so you will criticize because that's your bread and butter, that's your job and we have to take criticism on the chin. See, I have seen especially movie directors, in fact, I've had many because I used to be an entertainment editor. Why do you take criticism so personally? I have seen now because of social media, you know, directors will take that review, they will put a screenshot, then they will, oh, you know, itna fragile ego kyun hai? Yaar, apko achcha nahi laga, nahi laga, yaar. It's fine. It's a work of art. It's meant to be subjective. Now, supposing, Papiya will buy everything changes. She will read it, and she will say, mm, I don't like it. I thought she could have been more sensitive. Momita will read everything changes and say, no, 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 cut was better. I had somebody tell me, Shimoi, uh, I loved everything changes, but Nothing compares to cut. You should write another cut. Now that's another thing, right? You can't typecast a writer. I have given you everything changes. I have given you Sita's curse. I have given you faraway music. Every book is different. It's like asking, like even that question, which is your favorite book? Please stop asking that question. The mother can't choose between her children. To them, every birth is difficult. Yeah, every every book, you know. So I don't think that I have left out anything. Um, I personally believe that, you know, every book, the ending, I always, I get a little jittery. I, I always feel that, uh, and if you read my books, Movita may be able to say this, the endings are always a little abstract. So somebody told me at my launch, that actually I've seen Cars first. No, all I think, even yeah. Cut, I think, was many. Uh, many I, I loved it. So I no, no, no. loved it. But yeah. uh, many of my friends said, uh, Can you just make me explain the ending? Yeah. So then. somebody told me at this launch, and I found it very funny. They said, uh, You know, your endings are a bit Nolan esque. So I said, Nolan esque? You know, because with 200 people in that room, you know, I was a bit 
you know like overwhelmed uh, you know as if no less so they said no but it takes a little time to understand kya hua so see as a writer i like to leave my endings a little open i don't like to spoon feed my readers ki dekho ei bhabe but some stories you know they end like that like if you see cut maybe if you see far away music you've got the wrong ek ending hua hai but always i feel because life is so fluid right and most of the times i struggle with endings i struggle with letting go of characters you know so i don't like to let them go totally you know so i keep a bit of uh, them with me you know because we live those lives right we we live those lives criticism is very important criticism should happen reviewers should review but honestly review the book don't go see reviewers also go by trend everybody is slamming that movie so it's a bad movie not necessarily you might like that like everybody liked prakton i thought it was trash and i thought the way it portrayed women pitting two women each other you know with the man as the trophy a man who's a lazy slob who suddenly became a good husband is stupid but fine you like the movie to aapki choice hai na as a creator i have to respect your opinion also you respect me i respect you it's very simple any other questions I think they are all hungry. Oh, one hand has raised. Okay, chalo. Introduce yourself and stand up. How lovely. Uh, hello, ma'am. My name is Karima Nanya, and I'm a student of BA Media and Communication. I wanted to ask, like, as an author, what are the course of action you generally take while writing? Like for Some it's like we first develop the characters and then we go for the plot line, and for some it's like we have a plot and after that we go for the character there. So like, what's the process for you? The no, story comes to my head first, actually. Then I just write. So my thing is I finish a chapter every day, and when I do a book, I completely cut myself off from everything. That's something I do. So. during the gestation period of a book i don't watch like uh, my book was in edits and it's come out so i haven't i haven't watched any television or anything for practically a year now so i don't do that i just stay with the book i stay with myself that's my process um i think of the story first and the story is populated with characters right so uh you asked me about my upcoming project so i'm working on a love story because you know my readers have been whining and complaining for the longest time that apart from you've got the wrong girl and i think you guys will like you've got the wrong girl because it's a young rom com and it's very funny so they keep telling me that ma'am all your books are so serious you know the men the boys uh, well, you know young men tell me everything is about women ma'am you know it's like we don't exist so i'm doing a story uh, a, love, a very modern love story a very contemporary love story which is set uh, in a south asian kind of diaspora so i have thought of the story with the characters so it's not like i think of the characters before and then the story the story comes with the characters so this is a story it's a love story between shantanu and shona shona is a uh, a rock like i wanted to work on a female south asian rock star you know like i wanted to do like uh, say a miley cyrus or um, you know like an adele or a selena gomez but i wanted to make her south asian i wanted to do an indian like an indie kind because that's my somewhere you know that's the person i wanted to be i wanted to be like the indian whitney houston so i want to create that character and it's her love story with a man called shantanu who she meets uh, who's a single dad and you know all of that so it's a very modern love story it's a love story which is uh, with you know it deals with themes of divorce and single parenthood and also depression a uh, mental health i wanted to do a female character who battles alcoholism and depression i was very very moved by pooja bhats memoir one of the few celebrity memoirs that i respect because she wrote so openly about her battle with the bottle and women don't talk about alcoholism you know it's just something that you know even women 
drinking. Like at my launch, I had a whiskey company as a partner. And the photographer, whenever I'm taking a picture and I had a glass of whiskey in my hand, continuously he's removing that glass. So then I told him, yeah, come here. To be careful, it's a photo. Bar bar number three. And key what? Che, oh, the glass that chole ja che, oh, the chole ja che. So I must have wasted, you know, half finished whiskey. So I said, you know, I'm thirsty. I need a drink. Why you? No, 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 no. Okay, I'm not going to do that. No, writer. And the writer, the male writer, that you guys are saying, no. Today, when you're a male writer, you have to whiskey. You have to glass that up. It's bad. You know, it's an image. Why are you removing it from my hand? So, you know, so the thing is that it, it's going to deal with a lot of that. So I think of the, the plot and the characters. So always be confident. You know, it doesn't matter. That's what I say. I never, people say, no, I, I wrote the first draft, then I corrected it, then I wrote the second. I don't do that. You know, that's it. With, with cut, so cut is a play. You know, for those of you who will read cut, it's, it's a play. And when I wrote it, I was told by one of the biggest publishers, it's a fantastic story, but make it into a book, like convert the narrative arc into, it's just monologues. If you read cut, it's like how people perform in a play, which is why it was made into a play. It's a screenplay basically, like a Vijay Tendulkar play. Publishers don't publish plays anymore. Hindi mein hota hai, natak. Abhi bhi, you know, people write and publish. English publishers don't. So I told them that, see, it doesn't matter. If nobody publishes it, anyways, it's a play. I will take it to the people I know. Some of my friends are theater directors. And I'll see if they like it. Or I'll give it to some student group and they will make it into a play. Doesn't matter. It's OK. Don't get put off by rejection, guys. Rejection is very Romantic rejection, publisher rejection, job rejection, uh, rejection in colleges. But don't let that get you down. You know, J.K. Rowling, famously, she's published by Bloomsbury. I mean, we do the Harry Potter. Was rejected so many times. She was a seven, no, no, 57 times. She was a bankrupt, struggling economically, uh, you know. She was a single mom, you know. And she used to sit in a cafe where they didn't throw her out over one uh, cup of coffee and write. So, you know, just keep writing. Yeah, yeah, writing saved her. So that's what I'm saying, yeah, writing saved her. She would have died by suicide, you know. Rest is history. And even if you don't become J.K. Rowling, it's fine. It doesn't matter. And let me tell you, publishers will break your confidence. Even if you're a best-selling writer, they will tell you, they will treat you like shit. Yes, or no. No, the, the editors and even, even the system, the system will make you feel like shit. Koi baat nahi. Koi baat nahi. Your, your profession, journalism will do that to you. It doesn't matter. Stand by your truth. That is very important. All the best for your upcoming projects, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, a very good afternoon, everyone. Uh, now we have uh, come to the end of the, you know, this um, uh, wonderful and enlightened session by Sri Moitiyo Kundrima for wonderful, uh, you know, engaging session of, you know, reading habits, purchasing books, and uh, she has talked about the journalism and the days of her, uh, you know, early journalism. So I would like to extend my gratitude to Adamas University for giving us, uh, me the opportunity to arrange this spectacular program where we could invite our dear, uh, you know, author, writer, columnist, Sri Moi Kundu. I would like to thank our Honorable Chancellor Sir, Professor Dr. Samitre, Honorable Vice Chancellor Sir, Professor Suranjan Das, to bless us, uh, you know, to bless us for conducting such a program. Uh, along with them, I would like to thank Associate Dean uh, Sir of School of Media and Communication, Dr. Akash uh, to uh, you know arrange this uh, session with a, you know uh, with this great spirit and enthusiasm. And a special thanks to Ms. Uh, Momita Devas, without whom it was not possible to materialize the program. Uh, thank you, thank you. Along with all the faculty members of SOMC and student volunteers, I uh, and 
those who are present today from uh, you know other schools. Uh, thank you all, and uh, we hope that we can call you, ma'am, for you know further interaction with us. I would love that. And thank you. Thank you.